Hi, Al Riley here for the Garnish School of Sound. Today I'm going to show you how to use Beat Detective in Pro Tools to fix timing problems in your multi-track drum recordings. And this technique is going to be useful to you if when you record your drummer playing to a click, he can't always seem to stay on the beat. I'm going to do the demonstration on a four bar section just to keep things simple, um, but you can apply all this to longer recordings or even whole songs. So let's have a listen to the raw unprocessed drums just to see what we're starting off with. So the timing's not terrible, but if we play it back with a click, we're going to start to hear that a lot of those beats are just slightly out of time. And if we zoom right into the grid, we can see that a lot of them are happening a little bit too early, a few are a bit too late. Um, so Beat Detective is just going to fix all that for us. And before I launch Beat Detective, I'm just going to make sure that all of my drums are in an edit group together. So I'm going to select those, hit Command G, and then just call the edit group drum mics. Just so that if I select one region, it's going to select everything so we can do all this together. So to launch Beat Detective, we're going to go up to the event menu, select Beat Detective, or if you prefer shortcuts, um, it's command and then eight on the number pad. And the first thing we want to do is actually tell Beat Detective uh, what range we're looking at. So we select the audio and then just hit capture selection and that updates the start and the end point. And the next step is to actually analyze the audio and work out where the trigger points are, where the individual drum hits are actually happening. So as long as bar and beat marker generation is selected, we can go over here and click analyze and it's going to analyze our audio and just stick all those trigger points in there. I find that low emphasis works the best, um, but you can go through and choose a different one if it's not working for you. So I click analyze. It's done that. And as we move the sensitivity slider, we can just see the little pink trigger points actually appear in there. Um, and I'm wanting to just make my cuts on the kicks and the snares in this case. So I'm just going to slide it up. So just the kicks and the snares uh, selected. That looks like all of them at about 10%. And once we've done that, the next step is to actually separate all these hits into separate regions. So we go over to region separation. And when you've selected that, you really, you see you get this um, trigger pad. And what this does, it just gives you a, a few milliseconds before each hit to make your edits and joins. So it's always a good idea to have something like three to five milliseconds around there. Um, let's leave it five milliseconds at the moment. Um, and then we can just go through and separate all of those regions. Now we can see that Pro Tools has created a whole bunch of new regions. And now we want to actually move these regions onto the grid into the right timing. Um, so that's called region conform. Let's click on region conform over here. And you can either keep it um, as a sort of standard, everything's going exactly to the grid, or you can kind of vary the strength of, you know, how far these things are moved from zero to 100%. So if you want to retain some sort of human feel to the playing, you can keep it at less than 100%. Um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to keep it exactly on the grid, so I don't need to have that checked. Um, now when I hit conform, everything's just going to slide into the right place, and all those regions are going to be on the grid. So you can see they move there slightly. If we zoom in, we can just see that a bit more clearly. And if we play that back now, we might hear little gaps or clicks where those regions have just been moved. So let's just have a quick listen. So a couple of tiny little clicks and gaps there. Um, so we need to do the final stage, which is edit smoothing. And that's just going to go through and fill those gaps. And we can provide the crossfades as well if we want to. So I always find that fill and crossfade works best. Um, I'll leave the crossfade length at five milliseconds for now. If that's not working, then you can change it. Um, and then we just click smooth and it's going to go through and do all that processing. And this is why I kept it short because sometimes creating these crossfades can take a little bit of time. Um, we just got to wait for it to be done. And that's done. So now when we play this back, we should hear our drums in time and with no audible edits. And if you're happy with the work you've done, then you can close Beat Detective. And what I like to do is copy all of that audio and paste it onto a new playlist or a new group of playlists in this case. So paste that onto there and then you can just consolidate the audio. So that's Shift Option 3. 
and then you don't have any of those edits in there anymore. It's just like working with entirely new regions. So that's just a quick crash course on how to use Beat Detective to fix timing errors on your drum tracks. <laughs>